There's always that one friend who thinks every cloud in the sky is part of a secret government plan. And the name they keep bringing up like it's Voldemort, Harp. Some say it's a secret weather controlling machine hidden in the icy lands of Alaska. Others believe it's responsible for everything from floods to earthquakes and possibly even that sudden rain during your summer vacation. But what is HARP really? A doomsday device? A glorified radio tower? Or just a science project that got caught in a storm of conspiracy? Today on X Theories we're tuning into the weird waves of HARP. Strap in, because the weather forecast just got suspicious. Alright so, what exactly is HARP? Some say it's the planet's control panel, others, just a bunch of antennas in the middle of nowhere. Let's start with the official version. Boring, sure, but important. HARP stands for the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. It launched back in the 90s, funded by the US Air Force, Navy, and DARPA. Yes, that DARPA, the one that keeps popping up in sci-fi movies. But don't worry, apparently it doesn't control the weather, or so they say. The official goal to study the ionosphere, the upper layer of the atmosphere, about 80 to 600 kilometers up. That's where solar radiation plays tag with particles, where auroras dance, and where GPS sometimes gets as confused as your grandma using Google Maps. How does it work? Simple. It beams high-frequency radio waves upward to see how the ionosphere reacts. Basically, we zap the sky and see what happens. Sounds harmless, right? Like a science project for gifted kids. But, here comes the fun part. The facility's in Gakona, Alaska, and it looks exactly like something out of a conspiracy movie. Dozens of antennas lined up on a frozen field, no giant walls, no laser-armed guards, no aliens at the gate. In fact, they even host public tours. Yep, you can actually visit. But the internet said, that's exactly what a secret government project trying to look innocent would do. And honestly, kinda checks out, because yes, HARP can heat up tiny portions of the atmosphere, like literally warm up parts of the sky. And of course that got people thinking, if it can do that, maybe it can also cause rain, storms, or hey, why not a casual earthquake or two? The truth? Kinda disappointing. No, HARP can't summon hurricanes on demand, the energy it emits is way too small. And besides, weather happens much lower than where HARP operates. But come on, any government project with antennas, radio waves, and a weird acronym is just begging for conspiracy theories. And HARP? It's a magnet for them. And since we're talking about conspiracies, what about another version involving space espionage? Yeah, why not? What if HARP isn't just for atmospheric studies, but also for intercepting signals from outer space? Let's not forget that HARP can emit electromagnetic waves over long distances, so maybe, just maybe, it could be capable of picking up signals from satellites or even from some extraterrestrial civilization. Hey, even if it sounds crazy, maybe they've already done it, but they don't want to tell us because we don't want to know what the aliens are doing on their frequencies. Okay, now that we've given the conspiracy theorists something to chew on, let's see what the scientists have to say about all this. Spoiler alert, nothing dramatic. To the scientific community, HARP is just a tool, basically a giant microscope, but instead of looking at cells, it looks at what the sky does when you hit it with radio waves. That's it. No lasers, no weather manipulation, no teleportation to other dimensions. Researchers say HARP's energy output is tiny compared to the sun. Think of it like this. The sun is a fire-breathing dragon blasting the atmosphere non-stop. HARP is a broken lighter that flickers. Occasionally. So, no, it can't alter global weather, steer hurricanes, trigger earthquakes, or, unfortunately, stop it from raining on your weekend. In fact, in 2014, the program was temporarily shut down. Budget cuts. Naturally, conspiracy theorists were like, aha, they shut it down because it was too powerful. But reality, it's expensive. And when the government's not feeling generous about funding an antenna field that doesn't shoot lasers, they pull the plug. Simple. Later, the University of Alaska took over and even started hosting open house days. You know, exactly what you do with a top secret climate weapon, right? Bottom line, scientists are kind of bored with the drama. To them, Harp is useful but limited. A tool. Not a harbinger of the apocalypse, but hey. When has reality ever stopped the internet from dreaming big? Okay, now things get real. Because when the planet's boiling, ice is vanishing, forests are burning, and summer feels like someone left the microwave on high, some people look to the sky and say, Aha! It's Harp! I mean, what else could possibly cause all this, right? Let's slow down a bit and look at the facts. Climate change? Very real. But it didn't start in 1993 with HARP. It began with the Industrial Revolution, mass burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, pollution, 
and our unsustainable consumer habits. And yeah, it's psychologically easier to blame some mysterious government project than to admit, we're all kind of responsible. HARP simply doesn't have the power to alter the global climate. It definitely didn't cause the heat waves in Europe, droughts in southern France or floods in Germany. Those are direct results of accelerated global warming. And here's the irony. People who say climate change isn't real are often the same ones saying HARP is behind the weather. So, which is it guys? Instead of understanding the actual mechanisms behind these disasters, we'd rather find a single villain. Simple, clean, satisfying. Hailstorm in April, HARP. Heat wave in October, HARP again. Forgot your umbrella and it started raining? Guess who? But the real world is messy. So, is HARP a secret weather weapon? Or just a boring science project with a cool sounding name? Maybe the truth is somewhere in between, but probably leaning more toward nope. Sure, it's easier to blame mysterious antennas than to admit we're all slowly baking the planet. But, hey, what's a theory without a little drama, right? If you enjoyed today's rabbit hole, hit like, subscribe, and drop this in the comments. Harp me up, Scotty. Until next time, stay curious.